Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. Got another beautiful day going on here. Looks like one more and then uh, tomorrow's supposed to be good, then Sunday it's supposed to be dicey, and after that it's going to be cold. So, um, the plus about cold is hopefully it firms up the ground a little bit and I can move things around easier. Um, the bad thing about cold, obviously, it's harder to get moving. This rig, this, I believe, and I don't know, is a 1987 Honda TRX 250EX. That's what I believe it is. I got the code from the wheels. Um, three of the wheels indicate it, they were manufactured late in 86. The non-matching wheel, the red one, Um, I didn't find a day code on it, and given that it doesn't match, I'm not thinking it's that important. Anyway, that's what I believe it is. If you go through, go back to what Honda was up to back then, um, 87, there's not all that much debate about, but as you, they kind of stopped making this thing for a little while, and then it kind of came back, and it was the ring con. Though the ring con, I think, has the motor turned. They, they, they kind of wandered around a little bit. And then finally they got rid of the 250EX and went with the 300EX. The 300EX, we know what it is. They started making it. They made it for a lot, a lot of years, and all is good. Um... And then they went with the 400EX and kept the 300EX, and um, it's pretty well defined. But this, this beast, I believe it is. So let's go with that. Though, um, what we're going to be doing today is troubleshooting a non-spark situation. So it doesn't matter if this 250EX is not sparking or your... 250 ES or SX or whatever is not sparking or even your your 300 it's all the same basic troubleshooting and let me show you what that is the first thing I always do is you make sure everything's hooked up right nothing's hacked and everything appeared to be hooked up then I take the plugs out of the back of the CDI unit. This thing only has one CDI unit. Um, so that makes it a lot easier. Uh, if you have two CDI units then we're gonna have to spend a little time at that. That's what this thing has and I'd have to go troubleshooting that a little bit to figure out how they swap from one to the next. Well I know they use the um, reverse switch but I'm not quite sure what they're switching back and forth with the reverse switch um, anyway um, so let's assume you have one CDI you unplug all the wires and then you start probing you put one on ground right my meter one to ground root, root, right to ground clip it on make sure you got good contact and the second one you put a little piece of wire or something so that you can poke it in the connector and do some readings Anyway, I did that, right, 1987 TRX250, that should be an EX, no spark, DVM, that's a digital voltmeter, uh, measurements to ground, and basically CDI plug each one of those little things to ground. Blue and yellow, which goes to the pulse generator, I got 336 ohms, which is about as expected. Red and black, which is the CDI stator that provides power. I got about 185 ohms, about expected. Green and white, which is ground to ground. I got one ohm, which is probably mostly the leads and the connection up there and all that. So I was pretty happy with that. Black and white, which is the on and off switch. In my case, the wire is cut. So I got an open circuit right which makes me real happy uh, 
black and yellow which goes to the ignition coil this guy right here right I got 1.2 ohms which is about what's expected and gray has something to do with uh, forward and reverse as I moved the shifter it danced around a little bit I got 10k ohms and it, it was kind of moving around all over the place. I expected a second open circuit there. So what I did is I pulled the wire out, right? I just, um, and the way you do that, let me show you real quickly. Make sure I get to lose my little screwdriver. The way you pull the wire out is you look in there and you see on top it's kind of wide and on bottom it's kind of kind of narrow you slide a small screwdriver right in there on the bottom right like that and wiggle it around and eventually I don't know how well you could see it it's a little tab here right and you kind of push that in and it allows the wire to slide out so just quickly let me do that guys take a quick look at the beautiful day so I slid the wire out because I want to make sure it's disconnected and I hooked up my CDI right so what I did is I disconnected it that's where the on and off would go. That's where the reverse safety would go, right? The two empty holes. So I pulled them right out. Didn't cut the wires, though you can. Just much, much neater if you don't. And uh, I tried it again to see if it would spark, and it would not spark. So the next thing I did is I said, well, let me just swap out the coil. So I grabbed a spare coil I had, and I put it on there right and it's kind of hard as I'm kicking this at the same time video um, with the spark plug it was I really couldn't get a good image of the spark quite honestly with uh, I couldn't even see the spark so hopefully you guys are seeing some nice yellow there let me just hit it another couple of times to so hopefully you're seeing it flash. So it turns out that in my case, the, um, the spark coil was bad. Even though I did all the readings and I saw the primary was good, that doesn't mean, or I saw the primary was good, that doesn't mean the secondary was good. I was also a little su suspect because of the way the cap was. Um, the cap came off easily and I looked down in there and it was pretty pretty chewed up and messed up so this this coil it might just be a wire issue um, or it could be that from all the fooling around um, that they they broke the secondary wire this this connection in here I'm, I mean the secondary wire is pretty small so it wouldn't take much to break that well, I was also kind of fooling around. I took a few minutes, and I took one of these small China um, CDI units, and I wired a plug to it. This plug came off of my... Um, I, I have one of those high-performance 12 volts GY6 um, CDI units that I cut the plug off so I could extend the wires to build an ignition system for this guy and I extended the wires and put all the uh, shrink wrap on them and all and just didn't get get around to finishing uh, putting together the whole thing for this this is the 300 EX but I plugged this one in and uh, pumped it over a bunch of times and I also got a spark. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll give you guys just a quick demo. Um, I'd really like to... Um, I haven't redone the carburetor yet. I haven't looked in the carburetor yet. And I know this, this 
bike has been sitting for at, la at least um, at least three years, if not longer. The first time I saw it, and he hasn't done anything with it, with it since I saw it at the uh, at the Craigslist List Sharks House. Um, the first time I saw it was several years ago, and um, three, maybe even three, anyway. Well, two. And he said it had been sitting for a while. It needed carb work, so obviously it needed more than carb work. It needed a, um, a spark coil. So anyway, what I did is I put in the pit bike CDI, and just to show you guys, Hopefully you guys are seeing spark. It's it's hard to kick it over and at the same time watch it spark. Um, my next step for this bike is to pull the carb, pull it apart, and uh, clean it up. And then uh, and then after that, she should she should fire up. Um, I'm kind of happy when I get a bike and I see that there's an air filter on it that makes me happy it would have been happier if the cover was on here too but given at least there's an air filter on it that that is a um, a good sign I'm hoping this engine isn't all uh, smoked all all chewed up on the inside um, that they uh, they didn't run it for the first million miles with an, uh, without an air filter on it. Um, I guess that's about it. Yes, yesterday, um, and I really want you guys to go check out Tony's channel. Uh, he doesn't have all that many subscribers, so go go check him out. Time to tinker. He's a cool guy. He's got a bunch of my projects that he just brought in. So go check his channel out. Go subscribe. Go tell him Harvey sent you. Um, and once again, he's he's picking up for you tractor guys. He's picking up a bunch of um, tractors uh, that, that he really wants to redo. He's got a lot of the uh, old stuff. So um, yeah, go go watch his videos. The more... The more one watches stuff like that, the more feedback you get, right? That, oh, people are coming to watch my videos. Um, and the more feedback you get like that, the more videos you want to make. Because it's like, hey, people care and want to watch this and find me interesting. I should respond in kind by giving them more interesting stuff to look at. Um, for those of you who didn't watch um, the video, I think I put it up this morning. He took out... A couple of uh, Sears SS12s, one with the hydrostatic, um, one with the standard. Um, I mean, look at this. We got like empty, um, which which is is good for me. I'm beginning I'm beginning to get almost enough space where I can breathe and and move a little bit. Um, I got to fix the sunroof here. Um, which obviously that's that's important, right? Uh, I can't. It's it's hard to get anything done when you got no space to work. Especially I got winter coming in uh, in two days, and I, I really got to kick it up a few notches to make things happen. But anyway, go go check out uh, his videos. He's a great guy. Go see what he's got. Um, over the years, he's had Honda 185s's or 1 ATC 185s. He's had little Z50s. He's had a lot of cool stuff. And if I were to guess, um, he's probably sooner or later. If if you're kind of interested in that stuff, sooner or later a deal comes by that you can't resist, and the next thing you know, you're into it again. So I'm I'm sure if he gets enough love and attention. He, he'll he'll probably get into the Honda stuff a little bit, um, the little 50s and 70s. He's up uh, Vermont way, um, so he's uh, he's a New Englander. Um, once again, really cool guy. Go go check out his channel. Go watch his videos. Tell him Harvey sent you and uh, and en enjoy. Um, 
he's a meticulous person. He seems to do really nice work. Um, just watching him strap up the load and all, he did a really good job. Um, he's not a... I'm, I lean a little bit more toward being a hacker, you know, up oh, works, all done, where he, he appears to be more of the kind of guy who will actually finish a project. Um, a lot could be said for both personalities. I got the personality I got, he's got the personality he's got, so I don't know. I'm sure he doesn't want to be me, and, and I know I don't want to... I, it's not my thing. I gotta, I gotta do a new project every day, or I get bored. So, that's probably why I got a million open projects and nothing's complete. Anyway, folks, I really want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and please get out there and enjoy all your days. Make sure you have fun. We are coming up on Thanksgiving, so you, you know, be cool with your families and have fun. Bye now, folks. <laughs>